on May 2nd, the fight the world has been waiting for will finally happen. Mayweather vs. Pacquiao has been expected, demanded, for six years now. In some sense, this means the fight has probably passed its sell-by date, the fighters themselves past their primes. But Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao are still the undisputed pound-for-pound -pound kings, the two most skilled and most accomplished fighters in the sport of boxing today. The fight is so highly anticipated, in fact, that you may be tuning in to the festivities without a clear idea as to why. What makes this fight so special, and why should we care? For Manny Pacquiao, the fight holds a special meaning. It represents not only the chance to finally meet his longtime verbal sparring partner in the ring, but the opportunity to make history. There are a lot of belts in boxing today, but not many of the men holding them can justifiably call themselves the best in their division. In fact, over 17 weight classes, there are currently 110 so-called world titles out there today, and that's only counting the belts offered by the most prominent sanctioning bodies. If that sounds ridiculous, it's because it is. Belts are essentially meaningless in this sport, an excuse to collect fees from the paper champions who wear them, and a means to trick fans into buying tickets to see a so-called world champion fight. Despite this, the question of who's the best still rules boxing, as it does every other sport. You could even say that it matters more in boxing than almost anywhere else. Every boxer has his trainers, managers, agents, and sparring partners behind him, but when he steps into the ring, his world is reduced to a population of two, and only one can come out on top. It's a lonely and beautiful game. So in addition to nonsense belts, boxing also has its crowns. These crowns are figurative rather than literal, but their importance far outweighs the gaudy leather, brass, and chrome of the belts. There are no interim crowns, nor are there five for every weight class. The crown represents a division's lineal champion, the closest thing to a true champion the sport has left. Historically, a man only becomes lineal champ by beating the last man to hold that title, or by winning a bout between the numbers one and two in the division if the crown is vacant. For Pacquiao, beating Floyd would not only establish him as the undisputed number one boxer on earth, it would make him the first man in history to wear the crowns of five different weight divisions. Nothing could make for a better token of his skill. Twenty years ago, Pacquiao began his career as a 16-year-old strawweight. He was reportedly so diminutive that he had to fill his pockets with weights to make the 105-pound limit. Within his first year of training, the young Pacquiao had already bulked up considerably and had to drain himself to make the light flyweight limit of 108 pounds. The first time he failed to make weight, he lost, and moved up to 112 pounds, flyweight, to try his luck there. It was at flyweight that he earned his first crown, stopping the excellent Chachai Sasakul in the eighth round to become officially the best flyweight in the world. But he was still growing and missed weight again, losing his title on the scales and suffering his second pro defeat shortly after. It was time to move up again. The weight cut was having such an adverse effect on him that Pacquiao elected to skip the junior bantamweight and bantamweight divisions altogether and moved all the way up to junior featherweight, 122 pounds. For the next four years, Pacquiao, like a force of nature, tore through the lower ranks of the junior featherweight division, finally seizing the attention of the boxing world with a win over highly touted titleist Leila Laduaba. Pacquiao had accepted the fight just two weeks prior but made the most of his opportunity by beating the veteran Laduaba from pillar to post, stopping him in the sixth round. It was just before this fight that Pacquiao met Freddie Roach, the man who helped make Pacquiao's next decade one of the most impressive in the history of boxing. Pacquiao never became the lineal champion at junior featherweight. His sights were set higher still, and his first fight at featherweight, 126 pounds, was against the wearer of the featherweight crown and one of the greatest boxers of all time. Marco Antonio Barrera. Barrera was a four to one favorite to win, but Pacquiao was completely unafraid. He knocked Barrera to the ground in the third round and battered him ceaselessly for nearly a half hour after, until Barrera's corner was finally forced to stop the fight in the 11th. 
Pacquiao became the first and only man to knock out the legend. A hard-fought draw with Juan Manuel Marquez and a tough loss to Eric Morales came soon thereafter, but Pacquiao avenged both within the next four years, handing Morales his first knockout loss a mere 10 months after their first fight and taking a decision over Marquez three years after that, with another win over Barrera sandwiched in between. The Marquez win earned Pacquiao his third crown at junior lightweight, and his fourth came just one year later, when he knocked out junior welterweight champion Ricky Hatton in just 5 minutes and 59 seconds. Pacquiao was the first man to win four crowns. He's already made history, joining the likes of Henry Armstrong, Sugar Ray Robinson, and Bob Fitzsimmons. But in 2014, Mayweather joined him as a four-division king, matching Pacquiao's accomplishment and backing it up with an undefeated record. A win for Pacquiao over Mayweather could mean many things. The perfect culmination to a storied career spanning 20 years, a long-awaited win over a rival that has, for years now, taunted him from the aisles and diminished his incredible accomplishments. This fight doesn't need belts to make it worthwhile, and it doesn't need crowns either. But if Pacquiao wins, that makes him the first man in history to claim the thrones of five different weight classes, staking his legitimate claim as the single best boxer from 112 pounds all the way up to 147. 20 years of dominance over a range of 35 pounds is a feat that may never be matched, and to cap it all off by cementing his role as the greatest pound-for-pound -pound fighter on the planet? Who's the best? This is the question that defines the sport of boxing, and on May 2nd, we will finally get our answer.